Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's been a couple months since I've posted, but I'm starting to make more videos every week now and I'm excited to share it with you. Today I'm going to be um, talking about five books that I think all pre-veterinarians and veterinary students and even some vets if they have free time on their hands should read. I think it's really good in preparing young students to go to vet school. I think it really um, you know, emphasizes the importance of a career in veterinary medicine and I'm really excited to share these books with you guys. So let's get into it. Hey everybody. So the first book that I'm going to be talking about is written by Dr. Nick Trout and it's called Tell Me Where It Hurts. This is one of the best veterinary books I have ever read and I recommend it to anyone who's interested in going into the field. You can be in high school, you can be in college, or you could even be a veterinary student right now. It's for all ages and I really recommend that you pick it up at your local bookstore or at the library. What it's about really is 24, a full 24 hour day that Nick Trout spends as a board certified surgeon at a large um, specialty hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. It has you tag along from 2 a.m. when he wakes up to go do an emergency GDV surgery, um, the emotional toll that it takes on the owner, um, some of the stress that it causes him, but also some of the really rewarding experiences that he has working not only on this case, but tens to 20 more cases that he has throughout the day. You know, you, it's like you're attached to his hip throughout the day when you're reading it. You get to listen in on conversations he has with, you know, loving owners, really unique experiences with really rare surgeries, you know, the way he communicates with other, um, you know, specialists and experts in the field that he works with on a day-to-day -day basis. And it really just gives you a, you get to basically be a fly on the wall um, throughout the day in a specialty hospital. So if, if you're interested in going into the field and you don't know a lot about specialty medicine, because um, I know we most of us just know about general practices, um, this is definitely a book that you do not want to list it on the shelf. Um, so this is the first one. All right, so the second book that I think everybody should purchase and pick up sometime during their career is going to be um, this book called The Business Side of Veterinary Medicine. It's written by um, two doctors. One is a human doctor and one is a um, professional veterinarian. It's been transcribed from um, a book that was applied to medical schools, but now this has been specialized for the veterinary field. And what I really like about it is it's aimed at new graduates that have just recently graduated veterinary school. And you know, veterinary school is incredibly difficult and um, a lot of it is really heavy science-based and you don't necessarily get all the business aspects. You don't really learn all the business aspects um, that you really need to know before you become a full-fledged veterinarian. And this book is really meant to fill in those gaps that you might have. You know, what is it like getting hired at a, at a practice? What do you really need to be looking for? I wrote a couple more notes here. Um, one of the things that I really like that this book talks about is, you know, how do you approach your first job once you graduate? Are you looking for more short-term short financial rewards to pay off those hefty student loans? Or are you looking to find somewhere you can grow as a doctor and maybe buy into the company eventually? Are you more motivated, you know, by you know, trying to settle down with, with um, a, a loved one or family member, or are you maybe single and willing to move anywhere to find, find a job? Those are some of the questions that are tackled early on in the book. I think some, some other topics that they cover um, specifically is like how to negotiate your contract. You know, who do you need to reach out to? Are there certain lawyers or other professionals that you should get, um, you know, in the box hearing with you before you go negotiate a huge contract. Um, it also helps, you know, guide graduates in, um, in a certain direction and help, help, um, help them to basically understand some of these more basic um, working professional ideas. Also, like, do you ever wonder, um, you know, about what certain factors in the workspace are really important to you? You know, is it important that you have a steady work-life balance or is it more important that you really get along with the certain doctors you're working with? Are you trying to see a ton of cases? Are you trying to see um, a more predictable caseload? Um, these are conversations that you need to have with the staff the veterinarians as well as um, some of the management um, behind the hospital. And these are a couple, you know, bigger ideas that um, the two doctors really start diving into in this book. All right, so the third book that I'm going to be sharing with you guys today is called Immune. 
A Journey into the Mysterious System That Keeps You Alive by Philip Detmer. Um, I don't know if any of you recognize this name, but there's a famous YouTube channel um, called Quartzgesagt in a Nutshell. It's one of the most viewed YouTube channels out there, especially in the past like five to 10 years. And it just talks about a kind of helps in just normal individuals like you and me better understand really complex science ideas. Um, so one of the topics that I was really nervous and am really nervous about as I proceed to go to a medical program is immunology. I've never taken any sort of immunology course and is by far one of the scariest fields in, in medicine um, that I know I'm going to have to study a lot about in the next coming years. So, you know, getting a book that really helps me better understand um, our own immune system, especially with the COVID-19 pandemic, was really important to me. And this is one of the most fascinating books you will ever read. I mean, the way he can just anthropomorphize and simplify really complicated cellular interactions, um, you know, from just basic innate immune system, processes of inflammation, and then communicating with the adaptive immune system, all the way to like memory cells and how vaccines tie into these and how it's actually a myth that you can boost, boost your immune system and really, you know, how, um, how we can just be healthier individuals by understanding how immunology works. And this is far from a whole complete textbook about, you know, a full scientific understanding of immunology, but it really gives you a very strong foundation um, into the field of immunology. And I laughed more times than I can count reading this book. It's it's thrilling, it's entertaining, it's everything you could ever want from a science book trying to tackle, tackle a really difficult subject. So if you have any free time this summer, definitely check this book out. This next book is written by Bill Bryson. You might have seen it at your local bookstore and it's called The Body, A Guide for Occupants. Similar to the book Immune, it really tries to tackle complicated subjects such as um, basically it tries to tackle all subjects regarding your body system. So it talks about heart, your heart, your circulation, your lymphatic system, your urinary system, um, you have some about your immune system, but also about like how your brain works, you know, how we've evolved and come to better understand every single body system that exists in our body, our smell, our sensory um, organs, and everywhere in between. Um, it's, it's incredibly fascinating because these authors, including Philip Detmer, um, the author of Immune, they both are really able to captivate the audience in some, um, while they still tackle some really difficult concepts. Um, I really like this book and I would recommend it for anyone who's going to enter any form of medicine. Um, because it gives you a really nice background foundational understanding as to why all of these um, you know, body systems are in place and how they help us on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, I don't think um, you're going to maybe find too minute details that you might learn in medical school, but it definitely does do a pretty significant deep dive um, into each organ system. And I think that I found that really fascinating. I'm not quite done with it, um, but I'm working my way through it and I highly recommend it. So go check it out. All right, so the last book that I'm going to cover today is called Dr. Dogs, How Our Best Friends Are Becoming Our Best Medicine. Now, this is really going to be a good book if you're an animal lover or if you're just interested in human medicine. I think um, this book really dives into how our canine companions are becoming some of the best form of medicine that we have towards treating individuals with a variety of different diseases. For example, you know, um, the author, Maria Goodavage, um, she basically talks, you know, about how um, certain dogs have been trained to detect early onset cancer, some Parkinson's, um, you know, low diabetic glucose values. Um, they've been able to come to anticipate seizures um, and they help treating things like autism, anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, and PTSD. Um, and a lot of these um, you know, the ways that they can help humans is through their really strong sensory perception um, from their nose. Um, and I think that the way that they can um, have been used to help human beings overcome some of the most difficult um, medical obstacles um, that humans ha have no match towards helping treat, that dogs are now able to 
um, you know, come in and basically help save individuals is, is um, you know, leaves me speechless because it's, it's really impressive. Um, it's a lot of really intensive dog training that goes on, but um, I do recommend this book to really anybody um, who's interested in seeing how our, our um, fellow dog companions are improving the lives of millions of Americans across the world. So definitely check this one out. Um, it's a good read. So that's going to be it for today. Our five books that I talked about. There are a lot more books about veterinary medicine, about human medicine, and that I recommend a lot of um, you pre-vets and veterinary students and even medical students out there go check out. I can't recommend these books enough. Um, I know summer's coming up um, and I think that you guys should if you're looking for a new book to read over the summer, just to keep your mind um, occupied during your, um, you know, empty months, I think that these books are going to be really educational and um, really rewarding reads. So it's been nice talking to you guys today. Um, keep a lookout for some more videos coming soon and have a good day.